Hey, this is Janus the Great, and I wanted to just give my thoughts briefly about climate change. I believe the climate is changing and it has always been changing, so this isn't the problem. I wanted to figure out why, though, we have to read about climate change almost every day in every newspaper, on every website. Why is it hyped as this gigantic problem that is going to lead to this massive catastrophe. And I thought of several reasons. One might be obvious that if climate change does indeed raise the temperatures on Earth, then a large part of uh, permafrosted Russia will become available to agriculture. Specifically, uh, these will be pastures where the Russians could start doing pastoralism. They could start rearing cattle there and produce tons of milk and meat, essentially, to, food the whole, uh, to feed the whole world. So if you don't want Russia to become the livestock of the world, you don't want Russians to make that kind of money in the future, right? It's not happening today. Uh, I know a lot of people have trouble thinking about the future, but that is what I do the whole time. I always think about the future uh, and how the past informs us about what might happen next. So looking at the next 100 years, and this is what geopolitical strategists do, they look ahead, they look far ahead. Some of them look 10,000 years ahead or a million years ahead, and they try to figure out what might happen. Well, if the temperatures are rising, the permafrost in Siberia and Russia will melt, and the Russians become basically the livestock for the world. But you don't want Russia to become rich and wealthy off of selling the world meat, so you start teaching children in the West that they have to start eating bugs, protein from bugs, because if we start eating all our protein from bugs and plants, we can cut out that future livestock business that the Russians might win. This in itself, I know, sounds bizarre enough, but there's more. Uh, we are transitioning from fossil fuels, gas and oil, toward uh, wind and solar primarily. So let's look at wind energy. Uh, I was wondering, right? I really was wondering, okay, so the Saudis have a lot of oil, Norwegians have some oil, the Russians have a lot of oil and gas, but what do we in the West have? What kind of energy sources do we have left in the West? Europe doesn't have much oil and gas, barring Norway. Uh, America doesn't have that much oil and gas. They've got uh, fracking gas and so on, and whatever going on there. But it's not enough to profit off of it. Be meaning, it's not gonna, it's not gonna give you a power position in this world anymore. Um, the fossil fuel camp, Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Russia, they may actually uh, uh, continue to dominate. Uh, for example, tradi uh, traditional car engine industry for a long time to come. I believe that even though in Europe uh, we are told to start driving electric, I think people will be driving diesel and gasoline-fueled cars, petrol cars, in Asia and Russia for a very long time to come because they basically have got thousands of years of oil supplies left. So, so um, just like with uh, transitioning to the uh, bug-based protein to cut out a future potential Russian livestock business, uh, we also want to cut out the fossil fuel empires by transitioning to electric. But that means we, we in the West need to have the source for this electricity, and that is probably uh, wind. If you look at the map, and I'll put, it, I'll put it on screen, if you look at the map of where the wind blows in the world, surprise, surprise, guess what, guess what? The wind that blows around the coastal lines of the Atlantic nations, the US, Canada, Norway, the Netherlands, England, uh, part of France, that's where the wind happens to blow the hardest. That is where you can capture a ton of energy that you might convert into electricity. Uh, and now, looking at the example of a Great Britain, of England, there you have the royal family, now headed by King Charles III. And did you know that because the royal family owns so many estates alongside uh, England's coastal lines, the royal family also owns those, that strip of uh, ocean uh, up to 10 miles out from the coastline. And it is precisely in those uh, sea-based territories that the 
that the Royals own where the wind blows the hardest, where they can start building those windmills? Or did you really believe that you and I, as mortal citizens, were allowed to just get a bank loan for $3 million or euros or pounds, and we, we ordinary citizens, get to build windmills out in the sea? No, that sea up to 10 miles out or so belongs to states and royal families and so on and so forth. It doesn't belong to us. It belongs to the upper classes and the elites. That means they can start converting that wind energy into electricity and then sell that electricity to the people. Even though the wind that blows there is free of charge, we will be charged for the electricity. This is how um, uh, the elites of the West, of the Atlantic sphere, that means North America and Western Europe, intend to make a lot of money. They also, for this reason, will make it uh, compulsory for us to transition to electric cars. We are told that the climate is changing and that the whole world is going to collapse and everybody is going to starve and die unless we start driving electric cars. The problem is you have to buy a new electric car, which costs you 50, 60,000 euros, or maybe a secondhand one, still 20,000 euros. But who wants to buy a car with a used battery, though? So we're going to have to switch to electric, and then we're going to start exporting our electric cars and electric vehicles around the world to get the rest of the world hooked on electric so that our Western elites who control the wind around our Atlantic Ocean uh, can start making a ton of money off of uh, the electricity they will sell to us for the highest rates, obviously. They're not going to give it to us for free. <clears throat> and so you see that the Western elites are primarily concerned with controlling an energy source, the wind that blows around the Atlantic Ocean, and selling it off to the rest of the world to make a ton of profit, at the same time cutting out the fossil-based competitors in Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Russia. Ha-ha! So that's what this is all about. The elites don't care about the climate. The climate is changing, but it's not changing in any really bad way. So... So those kids, there are those very young people sm smearing uh, tomato soup onto Van Gogh's sunflowers. And um, those kids have been brainwashed to believe that climate change is real. And if we don't do anything about it, the whole world is going to perish. And so they ask you the question, what is more important, art or the climate? What is more important, art or life? Oscar Wilde, could you... Are you more concerned about the protection of a painting or the protection of our planet and people? The cost of living crisis is part of the cost of oil crisis. Fuel is unaffordable to millions of cold, hungry families. They can't even afford to heat a tin of soup. I would say nature is more important than both art and the climate because nature inspires artists. And the climate, although it is changing, it is not changing in a catastrophic way at all. That is a marketing plot sold to you by the big corporations. Sadly, young and impressionable people think they can be rebels and activists and revolutionaries by doing exactly what Nike and Starbucks and McDonald's tell them to do. They want you to believe in climate change so that we can force people to transition to electric vehicles, electric tractors, and so on and so forth. And so we can force people uh, to start buying electricity, electricity off of the Western elites who control the wind around the Atlantic Ocean. What about solar energy? Briefly, I can say that there's going to be a new case of solar colonialism, where the Western forces are going to grab the Sahara Desert. They're going to fill it with uh, solar panels because solar panels are very expensive and the African nations cannot afford them on their own. So the West will lend them the money, maybe through the World Economic Bank, the World Bank or something like that, or the IMF, the International Monetary Fund or whatever. They will give those nations loans to build the solar panels. The leadership there will get some kickbacks. Lots of people will become millionaires in those countries. Uh, but in the end, they will have to repay the cost of the solar panels, 
by sending the electricity out to Europe so that Europeans can drive Teslas. Because Europeans are the ones who can afford to buy a Tesla. Many Africans cannot buy them yet. Maybe they will be someday. So you see how it goes. Wind and solar are just tools for geopolitical power games. And if you have been brainwashed to believe that climate change is real, well, it is real. Climate is changing, but it's not changing in a catastrophic way. What is changing is that the Western power elite, who used to control the uh, colonial oil and Arab nations and so on and so forth, they've lost this control and they had to start looking for alternatives. So they find fracking and they, they look for oil, new, new sources of oil. And then they figured out, why don't we just use, steal the sunlight from the Sahara Desert, steal it from the Africans. And why don't we steal the wind from the Atlantic coastal nations and sell it back to those people? Uh, it's genius, really. It's really a genius plan. Though I suppose as an ordinary citizen, you're going to have to pay for it. <laughs>